Hello everyone, uh, my name is Judith Amores. I'm a first year PhD student at the MIT Media Lab. And this is a work that I did with my advisor, Patty Maes, uh, at the Fluid Interfaces Group. And today I'm gonna be talking about essence and how we develop a prototype that uses the smell as an interface. Um, this project has been motivated by the idea of creating interfaces that tap into the unconscious. So when we are designing user interfaces, we evaluate things like satisfaction, ease of use, and fatigue. And we tend to consider the user as a conscious thinking mind. But in reality, there is a lot of, of our perception of the environment that is unconscious, and a lot of our behavior as well, and does not involve deliberate uh, rational thinking. So that was one of the main inspirations to create this project. Um, the sense of smell is perhaps the most pervasive of all the senses, but is also one of the least understood and least exploited in human-computer interaction. Smell has a primary connection with our memory and how we feel. However, it is often underappreciated. We don't tend to perceive uh, the sense of a smell as important for our dirty lives in comparison with other senses. Nevertheless, humans are able to detect at least one trillion different kinds of odors, as discovered by Bushdit and his colleagues. And before that, and this is actually from two years ago, we thought we were only able to detect 10,000. So that, this is several orders of magnitude, more than distinguishable colors or tones, because humans can distinguish between 2.3 million and 7.5 million colors. So olfaction is a very complex and very deep sense, uh, very different from the others. That is why I find it really interesting for HCI applications. So when you smell something, it is first processed by the olfactory bulb, and the olfactory bulb sorry, has direct connections to the two brain areas that control the emotions and memories, uh, the amygdala and the hippocampus. And interestingly, the sense of sound, sight, and touch do not directly pass through these brain areas. They have projections, and they are rooted through the thalamus. And this might be why olfaction, more than any other sense, is so successful at triggering emotions and memories. You probably remember some memory from your childhood that is associated to certain scent. So researchers have studied the use of peppermint in memory performance. Michelle Fox and her team showed that the use of peppermint increased the speed, accuracy, and concentration during tasks. And the results also suggest that the peppermint, peppermint odor promotes a general arousal of attention. So participants stayed focused on their tasks and increased performance and concentration. On the other hand, it is also well known that the sleep has been identified as a state that optimizes uh, the consolidation of memories. Robert Stigall has been showing this in several papers published in Nature and Science. Uh, but not only that, um, Bjorn Rush and his colleagues also discovered that once another has become associated to a context of learned object locations, the application of this other while you're sleeping causes memory consolidation. That is pretty amazing. And some other recent findings uh, but by Anat Arce and Noam Sobel found that a single night of olfactory aversive conditioning during sleep significantly reduced cigarette smoking behavior during wakefulness. And this also persisted during several days. Um, so there are some sleep studies that use other delivery systems to unconsciously conditionate people, like the ones we've seen. Uh, actually, those are some of the images taken from the studies. But these amazing studies still remain in medical labs. And the main aim of our project was to fabricate a technology that people could use in their daily life without the need for medical assistance nor burdensome devices. And as you can see here in, the, in this image, this, can, this kind of devices cannot be used at home. You can see like the different sleep styles with the sensors and also the olfactometers and the, the, they basically use na nasal masks. So uh, it's pretty intrusive uh, if you want to use it at home for HCI applications. So also the HCI research community has formally looked into some of the challenges and possibilities for smell-based technology. Uh, actually, Mariana Obrist and, his colleagues, and her colleagues presented this two years ago at CAE. Also, Joe Fischke discusses the role of smell as an aromatic output for um, HCI and built in sync on the top right. Actually, I don't know why it's cut, sorry. Um, and that was able to meet uh, different scents. And that was almost 10 years ago. Actually, he was also at the Media Lab. And the oldest projects are from the 50s, so smell of vision and sensorama. And they were basically releasing scents while you were watching movies. So it's kind of like the first immersive virtual reality experience. And one of the most recent projects is also the commercial product Aromastic by Sony that can release also different scents. And similarly, Ophon, which has different smells that can be combined and sent through internet. Um, also, the work by Rob Strong and Bill Gaver that supports intimacy using a scent is the one in the middle, feather scent and shaker. 
Um, we were also, we were particularly interested in looking for like wearable form factors. So all, some of other researchers have also looked at wearable olfactory displays, such as the work by Yamada et al, using odor in outdoor environments, or Koi and his colleagues with sound perfume for face-to-face -face interaction. And actually the same group has also created light perfume that is a fashion accessory for synchronization of nonverbal communication. Uh, as well, some artists have explored the use of scent in fashion, such as the scent color, the, the scent color, and the smoke dress. Uh, but in general, most of the HCI uh, smell-related research focuses on immersion, communication, and entertainment. And we were particularly interested in creating a wearable form factor that could potentially be used in applications that need biometric information and also contextual data, like the studies we mentioned before, uh, and related with sleep, unconscious influence of mood, and cognitive performance. So that's why we created Essence. Essence is a wearable device that looks almost like a normal necklace or jewelry. So users can wear it during their daily basis, as you can see in the image. Um, the novelty here is that Essence is the first olfactory necklace that can be remotely controlled through the smartphone and automatically triggers subtle bursts of scent and varied intensity and frequency, depending on the given inputs that I'm going to explain now. So these inputs can be consciously triggered by the user or automatic using context-based information or physiological data. The user can release the scent uh, through a button in the app, so basically just like pressing the button and releasing the scent at the same moment, or releasing the scent by pulling the necklace. I'm going to explain the details, of the, the technical details, but basically just pulling the necklace and then it would release the scent. Uh, on the other hand, the smell can also be released depending on the location, time, and date, since we're getting the information from the smartphone. And we can also trigger the scent based on physiological information, such as relaxation, focus, or heart rate. Uh, finally, depending on these given inputs, we can change the intensity and frequency when we want to release the scent. So the user can set the frequency and timing of the burst of scent, and it can be, or it can also be a default duty cycle. So let's say you release one second of burst of scent every 20 seconds, or you can say like two or three every one minute. Um, so um, here's the uh, small video, and uh, as you can see here, the user can pull the necklace to release the, the, um, the scent. Uh, we also have a 3D printed cover that holds the piezoelectric on top of the cotton filter and this soaks the fragrance from the container. Um, the necklace can also release the scent without this manual activation and can be controlled to release the scent automatically without the user involvement. And I will talk more about the details now in the next slides. <coughs> So all the electronics are hidden in the back part of the necklace. Uh, we have a microprocessor, a Bluetooth low energy, a DC to AC for the piezoelectric, and a battery. So you can see here's the front part, and then in the back part we have all the uh, kind of the brain. Uh, so uh, we have a stick filter, as I mentioned before, a fragrance container. Right now it uh, has a capacity of 7 milliliters, so this lasts around 28 hours if the default duty cycle is by one every 20 seconds, but this varies depending on the, the settings. And then we have a 3D printed screw cup that holds the piezoelectric and uh, is connected with two cables for power supply um, and ground. And then these cables are braided with a conductive cord. Um, so usually jewelry strings uh, serves only as decorative element, and in this prototype we braided two cables with a conductive cord, with a conductive rubber cord that is a stretch sensor, and therefore the thread not only serves as a decorative component, but is also a connector between the microcontroller in the back part and the piezoelectric. So the necklace thread is a key element in the design of the uh, wearable. Uh, since it transfers power and data from the back part of the necklace to the piezoelectric. Here you can see a small image with a thread. Um, and the sensor measures stretch forces, so as you pull on it, the resistance increases, and then when these values go over a certain threshold, the sign is released. And finally, using Bluetooth Low Energy, the necklace communicates with the smartphone to release the sign accordingly. The current biometric information that we are sending to the smartphone is the Muse EEG that monitors brain activity. This is a research uh, uh, version that we are using. The Muse is a commercial product. 
Um, we all, uh, we're also, um, well, actually, we're mostly looking into relax and focus, and then these values are mapped from zero to one to trigger the scent accordingly, similarly to the stretch sensor. So in this case, we're looking into the relative band power for alpha uh, or gamma, depending if it's like relax or focus. And then we have the empathic wristband that monitors heart rate, also high availability and electrodermal activity, and then the necklace. Um, we currently have a framework that integrates biometric information from the Empathica and the Muse and sends this data to the Essence necklace through an Android smartphone app and we can then control the burst of sand and change the speed and quantity. We created different prototypes with different materials and aesthetics, some more simple, others more feminine. We send it to, to also to 3D print shapeways, so with different materials, also using different ergonomics for the back part. And here you can see how the piezoelectric is located on top of the stick filter. So it vibrates in high frequency wow. and it transforms the liquids into small droplets uh, for the fragrance. And although our main contribution is the design of the wearable factory display and the integration uh, with biometric or contextual data, we also conducted an initial testing of the prototype with a very sno small number of participants. And we were mainly interested in testing the robustness and usability of the prototype for long periods of time in multiple scenarios. So four participants wore the necklace in three outdoor environments and three indoor during three consecutive days. And for this test, we didn't use any biometric information. We had a default duty cycle of releasing one second of scent every 20 seconds. And this default duty cycle was mostly because um, the user didn't get habituated to the scent. This is actually really important. And then the types of scents that we used were tea tree, peppermint, and rose. And the smell selection was based on previous research studies that um, already show how positive fragrances induce feelings of relaxation, reduced anxiety, and alertness. So the necklace successfully worked during all the tests, and participants ranked the experience of wearing the uh, essence necklace very positively, as you can see in the figure. However, further study required, including larger sample size and increased variety in participants' demographics, because also factory perception differs by gender, age, and culture, so it's really important. And in general, during the study and while interviewing people, we corroborated how different per people's perceptions are in regards of smell. So while for one person the scent was not strong enough, for the other one it was too much. While some of them loved the peppermint scent, others did not like it at all. And the preference even vary from day to day within the same person. So this shows the importance for future designs of olfactory <coughs> devices, of creating systems that can be controlled by the user depending on their preferences. Some of the limitations and findings that we hope we can help future researchers in the design of olfactory devices are the importance of creating a system that lets the, change, the user change the frequency and, and intensity of the scent, like actually our prototype, the importance of the wearable form factor, so because some users actually reported that they don't use necklace in their daily life, so this can be a drawback. Uh, the refill need and the trade-off between the larger size container versus uh, uh, a smaller with more refilling need. And the current prototype has a capacity of releasing one scent, uh, so in the future it would be interesting to create a prototype with multiple scents. Also, it's really important to design systems that restrict the intensity or timing to avoid habituation. And finally, the need of miniaturization of the pack part of the necklace. I'm going to quickly put uh, some of the potential applications that we are envisioning for this type of technology. Um, yeah, so we are really interested in mindfulness and well-being. So monitoring the brain frequencies, we can detect when the user is in states of peak performance, high focus or concentration. So for example, let's say that the person wants to meditate. And measuring the heart rate and brain activity, we can detect when the user is relaxed or almost like when it's falling asleep. So we are really interested also in, in improving like, sleep quality, for example. As well, I'm particularly interested in learning and cognitive performance, um, as we mentioned in some clinical papers. Uh, so imagine that someone can read some article or study during the day, and then during the night you can rehearse this while you're sleeping. It would be amazing. So we have to do this in the future, for, and of course for uh, immersive environments. Um, so in order to test this type of applications for future work, we are planning to develop a friendly user interface for the app, something like if this then that. Um, yeah. Also using personalized machine learning and information from the sensors and GPS location, date and time, we could potentially know if the person is doing exercise, meditating, if it's in the office. Uh, and finally, adding multiple sense in one prototype and adapt that to the user's preferences. Um, we would also like to distribute some of these prototypes for people to try at night and hopefully reproduce some of the studies that we mentioned before at home and automatized.
Thank you very much. If, now I hope I have time for questions. <laughs> This is pretty mind-blowing. Now I'm, I'm waiting to see somebody come up with a sense of taste and what can we do with that. My question is, like when you release that smell, yes. like with strong perfumes or cologne, it, it can be too strong and some, after a minute it goes away, you don't feel it. Exactly. So do you have to keep releasing it to keep focused on the task or immersive environment? How? So this is actually why we mentioned in the findings it's super important for the habituation actually. So um, we are around, there are some studies that say that around one minute you already get habituated to the scent. And that's why it's really important to actually stop the smell. So you can have like different timings and then know for sure that the user is not habituated. Uh, and this is actually related with that. So I feel like this is why it's super important to control the frequency and timing, and as well as the intensity. Um, so yes. Cool, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hi, Judith. Hi. My name's Jane from Brown University. I have a question regarding, have you um, thought about future applications of personalizing this scent for different people? Because you mentioned that um, we have such a wide range of resolution for the smelling, but then um, does it affect the same way for me or other people? Yeah, definitely. This is something that it was really important for us. That's why actually you can see it in the prototype that every person can actually change. So the container is, oops, sorry. So the container is actually, um, you can basically change the, the, the fragrance that you have inside. Um, so it can be personalized in kind of an analog way right now. Mm -hmm. But we hope that in the future we will have different um, kind of scents, uh, like an array of different scents. Yeah. And then it can be released depending on the, the, like your mental state or your preferences, basically. But, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, uh, great work and great presentation, thank you. Thank you. Um, I was wondering, I mean, we are in human-computer interaction conference, but uh, whether you looked at the human-human interaction part of this, namely whether other people might get probably pissed off by somebody randomly yes. sending around. <laughs> This is definitely super interesting, the social applications, uh, and actually one of the main inspirations for, for the project as well, since everything is co really connected with the emotional part, it's uh, really important to consider as well social applications. The, the, the nice thing about the, the, the prototype that we are using is that, uh, actually we experience with different like form factors, but you have the necklace here, so the, the sand is just like directed to your nose. Okay. So hopefully you're, try you're reducing the amount of sand that you're sending to the other people, mm -hmm. and actually try with, well, we tried with different scents, also even like a bad scents, because that's really, I think it might be interesting as well to explore, and mm -hmm. this like kind of form factor, it's beneficial in that way. Okay. Uh, yeah, but Great. definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Maya Novo is the Sussex University. Very great talk, and nice to see that there's more coming on smell. <laughs> Thank um, you. Just a little bit more about um, your study. Did you get any kind of feedback on the subjective quality of the experience from whenever they started using it over the three or four days, what it was? Yes, so everything is in the paper, but actually I was really surprised because, I mean, actually they were men and I was a little bit afraid of this form factor of the necklace, but they mentioned it that uh, they even didn't notice it. And it was really nice, like the fragrance. Uh, there was one of the participants that mentioned that didn't like the peppermint scent, um, but it was not so strong. And that's actually why we said like it's really important to kind of change the, the, the frequencies and intensities. But uh, we were positively uh, surprised actually by the, the reaction of the participants. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I will catch you. Yeah. Thank you. Let's thank our speaker once more.